If you're looking to improve your IT skills, then this is the place. This time, we're going to take a look at DNS, the domain name system, and we're going to talk about exactly what it is and how it works. I guarantee by the end of this session, you're going to be a lot wiser. Stay tuned. Greetings everyone, welcome back to my channel. I really appreciate you stopping by. Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP, as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. You are most welcome. On this week's episode, I thought I'd take a trip down memory lane. And sometimes it's really important to be able to do that. There's a whole generation of folks coming into IT who simply don't have the on-premises skill set, especially with most of the vendors kind of focusing on cloud. So things like Azure Active Directory, Microsoft 365. Believe me, it's all absolutely fine. But if you don't know the basics, then your career is going nowhere. So I thought I would take just 20 to 30 minutes of your time today and talk about DNS and talk about exactly what it is and how it works. All right. I guarantee by the end of the session, you'll definitely be a lot wiser and more knowledgeable. Now, if you've not subscribed to the channel, we love subscribers, don't we? Go ahead, click on that subscribe button up there, ring that bell, and I guarantee you won't regret it because this is going to be a channel that is going to fuel your knowledge, my friends. All right. Now, of course, as always, if you've got questions, comments about this or any of my other sessions, I love those. Get them down below and I will do my absolute best. Also, I've just got to mention this week that we've just hit over 10,300 subscribers. I got to take my hat off to all of you. Thank you so much for helping me grow what I hope is turning in to be a, a great worthwhile learning uh, channel for all of you. All right. So I think without any more jibber jabber, I always say that, uh, let's have a look at the demos and start learning. Okay. So how does DNS actually work? Well, DNS is the domain name system. And what I want to do is if I just right click my network settings in Windows and I'm going to go to my network adapter settings, one of the most common settings that you'll find here is if I go into my network TCP IP4 addressing, you'll see that it talks about a DNS server. And what, is it, what exactly does that mean? So just imagine, if you will, I've got a machine called PC1, and PC1 is on Microsoft.com. Now, if you're keen, you've got a keen eye, you'll notice, hey, Andy, you put a dot at the end of Microsoft.com. You don't put a dot there. Ah, well, that was actually done on purpose. Now, on my particular machine here, my DNS server is actually installed on this Windows server, and this is the IP address. So the question is, how can I type in this and resolve it to a friendly IP address? So if you typed in pc1.microsoft.com, what you're actually typing in is .com dot. And that dot at the end is essentially what we call a root name server. And that there are approximately 13 root name servers in the world. So if I typed in Microsoft.com dot, what happens is it goes to the dot name server and it says, hey, do you know where Microsoft.com is? And the root name server says, you know, I don't know where Microsoft.com is, but I do know where the dot com name server is. So it then goes to the dot com name server and it says, do you know where Microsoft.com is? And it looks through its database and it says, yes. I know exactly where Microsoft.com is. So then it says, okay, who has got authority for this DNS domain? And there will be an IP address of a server that's hosting or that has authority for this domain. And that query is then sent to Microsoft.com and on the Microsoft.com DNS name server, it will say, hey, do you know where PC1 is? And it says, yes, I do know where PC1 is, 
PC1 has an IP address of this, and it resolves that. Okay, so that's typically how it works, but how does it work in reality? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into my Windows Server here. I'm going to go into Server Manager, and in Server Manager, I'm going to go into DNS. Now, if you've just installed Windows Server and you don't have DNS set up, what you can do is if you click on Manage, and you can add roles and features. And the roles and features uh, include core primary roles. So if I click into here and say, yes, which server do I want to install it on? I've only got one at the moment. And you can see I would then go ahead and select DNS, and it would then install DNS for me, which is what I've already done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to come up and click on Tools, and I'm going to go into my DNS server. And my DNS server at the moment is hosting my domain name. So, for example, here you can see that we've got our DNS server, and we've got something called Forward and Reverse Lookup Zones. So if I click into Forward Lookup Zones, you can see that we've got two domain names. So MCDCS is Microsoft Directory Services or Active Directory. And underneath, we've got our domain name, adatum.com. So let's suppose um, I wanted to re uh, register a domain name. And what I can do is I can come in here and I can say, hey, I want to register a brand new domain name um, so is it a primary zone, is it a secondary zone, or is it something called a stub zone? So a stub zone is essentially a copy containing only the name server record. So it's, it doesn't have authority, okay? And I'll explain what that means in a second. So for the, this example, I'm going to create a new primary zone. And I'm going to replicate it to all my DNS servers. All right, and I'm going to say click on next, and I'm going to call this zone, you know, I'm going to call it Bob's Boats, okay? So bobsboats.com. Now, when I click on next, now, if you were purchasing a domain name on the internet for your business, you have the choice of either having it hosted by your internet service provider or hosting it yourself. So if you're hosting it yourself, you would host it on a DNS server like this. So when you create the zone file, click on Next, and yes, I'm going to allow dynamic updates. Now, really important, by the way, for DNS, DNS by default is not a secure technology. So secure dynamic updates is definitely recommended because it adds an additional layer of security. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Next, and I'm going to click on Finish. Now, let's have a look at what's inside the zone. So I'm going to, you can see that Bob's Boats has been created, and I'm going to click into here. And what's happening here is you can see it's created two records. One is called an SOA, or Start of Authority, and another one is the Name Server record. Okay, so I'm going to double-click on start of authority. And the start of authority, you can see it's pointing to this particular machine that I'm on. So the start of authority means that I have authority to manage this DNS domain name. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'm managing it. Now the other tabs here, for example, zone transfers, Am I going to allow zone transfers to other DNS servers, either within my organization or um, externally? And what a name server does is you can see here, it talks about something called a fully qualified domain name or FQDN. So an FQDN is in this case, I've got a machine called LonDC1 dot, which is on the domain name, adatum.com, all right? So that's the location that's storing my DNS 
database because DNS, of course, is a database. All right. So um, that's this, that means that I have authority to manage this domain name. Now, the other record that we have here is for this server. And that just basically means that this particular server is hosting the name server records. Okay. Now, um, if you're with an ISP, your ISP will typically give you an address of where it's hosting its records. So again, very useful uh, to know that. Now, in reality, what you might do is you might actually add a second DNS server. So if you've got two DNS servers, um, you've got a little bit of what we call failover. So if one machine failed, then of course, um, your DNS database isn't lost and that everything would still work. All right. So that is your DNS. Now, um, of course, DNS is a database and you can add lots of different records in DNS. So, for example, on my network here, I might have a DNS record which says, OK, what's my uh, DNS record name? I might have a machine called student. I might call it student one and I'll put in the IP address. Um, and you remember our document here. So I'll take a note of this IP address and I will say, OK, uh, I am going to create, let's say, an IP address of 172.16.0 and let's say 20. OK, so if I've got a host machine, it might be a Windows 10 machine or something like that. Again, I'm going to put in here the IP address of that. All right. And I'm now going to add that host. Now, we have something called, you can create what we call a pointer record as well. So if you wanted to point to something else and allow uh, any authenticated user to update DNS records. Again, um, I'm not going to bother that uh, with that just now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add that host. And you can see it was successfully added. And I now have a host record. So another type of record that you might also want to put in is what we call a mail exchanger. So if you're using Microsoft Exchange, for example, um, again, you might have a host called, uh, let's say, MX1, um, and you would point to MX1 and again, put the IP address. And what that does, that's, that tells your users, that tells Outlook where your Microsoft Exchange is. Now, another type of record that you can also put in um, is something called an alias record or C name, conical name. And an alias record is basically an alternative name. So, for example, if I wanted my machine to be referred to as Bob, um, you can see bob.idatum.com. It's saying, OK, which machine do you want that to actually go to? Where do you want that to point to? So I'm going to say, well, I want Lund DC one to be have an alias of Bob. So I can click OK and I need to point to the source record. So in this case, it's a datum.com. And you can see that I have got Lund DC one here. So if I click on OK, so if anybody types in bob.adatum.com, it knows to point to this particular machine. And you can actually see that. So I'm going to open up a CMD or a command prompt, and I'm going to run it as an administrator. And the command that we can use is a command called ping. And this stands for the Packet Internet Groper. So I'm going to type in bob.adatum.com. And you can see that it actually resolves Bob because it can find that record. And that's using that default name. Now, another really useful command um, is a command called ipconfig. And if I just type in ipconfig, you can see it gives me my IP address um, and my default gateway or my router. Um, there are a number of switches here as well. So if you typed in forward slash 
all, it would give you lots more details, including your DNS server and your primary DNS, what we call the primary suffix here. All right. So DNS, the domain name system, resolves friendly names to unfriendly IP addresses. And that's essentially what it is. It is a database of different resources. So we've seen that we can have alias names. You can see that we've got a host name or a host record. And you now know what the start of authority record and the name server record is. Now, in reality, ladies and gentlemen, you would probably have more than one DNS server. Like I said earlier, DNS potentially is a single point of failure. So you would probably have a couple of different services and install a DNS on a couple of servers. All right. Now, the other thing that we have here as well is the capability to do something called a reverse lookup zone. And this is where you know the IP address, but you don't necessarily know the domain name, for example. Um, other things that we've got in here is that if I just pop into the actual server itself, uh, I'm going to come into the server here and I'm going to come into the actual properties of the server because there's a few interesting things here. And you can see um, the DNS service is listening on these IP addresses. And we have an IPv6 address and we also have an IPv4 address here as well. Now, if you had another DNS server on your network, you could basically add in the IP address to another server. So, for example, here, I'm forwarding externally to Google. So, DNS Google is 8888. Um, and again, you may have other DNS servers that you want to forward queries to. Um, in the Advanced tab here, um, useful things that really stick out here, and they always ask this question in exams, by the way, is enable something called round robin. So imagine that you're trying to contact Microsoft. So Microsoft is an enormous corporation, and it's got hundreds of thousands of machines connected to it. So you can imagine that their database is quite large. So they probably have, let's say, 50 DNS servers. Well, what Round Robin does is it basically sends your request to resolve your IP address to name. It sends your request to the first available server. So that's really what Round Robin means. All right. Um, other things that we've got, the root hints. So here you go. I mentioned that there are 13 root name servers in the world, and these are the addresses of each of those servers. All right. Other things that we've got, event logging. So again, for you know monitoring, administrative purposes, do you want to monitor events? Um, so yes, you can monitor all the events here. Um, there is also an audit log. Um, you, can, you can test your DNS server by sending a simple query. Uh, and it, you can see it, it's passed out and everything's fine. Um, again, you can also set security up here as well. So, for example, um, in most cases, um, who do you want to be able to man manage this? So, in most cases, it's going to be a, a, an administrator. So, there you have it, just the very basics of DNS. Now, just before I leave you, you probably noticed that we have a, another domain name or another zone here, a zone called MCDCS. And it begins with an underscore. And this is, means it's an administrative underscore. Now, Active Directory resolves every, you know, if you're looking for a, you know, membership of a group or where is my domain controller or where is this particular user, this is an example of a service that uses DNS. So there you have it. Isn't that cool? DNS, the domain name system. I hope that you're a little bit wiser and that you know more.
All right, if you enjoyed the channel, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. I want to I wanna have you on board, okay? We need to grow these numbers, don't we? And please do me a favor, go ahead and bump that like button uh, if you enjoyed the session. All right, um, session requests for the future. I love those comments, questions, anything like that. Get them down below. And as always, I'll do my best for you. So that's it for this week. You stay safe and I'll see you soon. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.